Liz Schultz and I'm going to be showing you the basic steps of making a sewn cattail mat. Cattail mats were often put on the outsides of wigwams. Wigwams would, were dome-shaped structures that were often built by Native American cultures throughout the Midwest and eastern parts of the U.S. and Canada. Now, um, we're going to start off by gathering the materials for a sewn cattail mat. And there are four basic parts that you need to make a mat. And they are cattail leaves, wood nettle, basswood, and a matting needle. So we are going to start off with the most important part of the mat, which is the cattail leaves. And for a cattail mat, you want the biggest and tallest, thickest leaves that you can find. So it's generally best to come out in late summer or fall when the leaves are the biggest. And it's also better to look for plants that haven't fruited yet or don't have the corn dog because these are generally going to be the best leaves. So when you collect, you either need a knife or scissors of some sort. If you have a knife, make sure uh, an adult is present. I brought my scissors along. So what I'm going to do is cut the cattail leaves near the base so I have as much leaf as possible. Now when I do this, I can see that some leaves are a little bit different than others. There are inner and outer leaves to a cattail. The inner leaves are a little bit thinner sometimes, and they are going to be used in the mat differently. So you may want to separate them out right from the start so that you have piles of inner leaves and piles of outer leaves. And what I'm going to be doing is just cutting down as many cattail leaves as I need to make my mat, because the more leaves you have, the longer the mat can be. So maybe I'll collect a good sized bundle of maybe a hundred leaves today. After you think you've collected a, enough leaves, what you want to do is lay them out on the ground on sunny days so that they can dry. This may take quite a while because this is a marshy area. So also remember when you're coming out to collect cattails, make sure you wear old clothes and definitely old shoes. Now that we have our cattails collected and drying, we're going to move on to the other materials that we'll need and those are wood nettle and basswood. And both of these plants are going to be used to make rope or cordage that will be used to make the mat. I have here some strands of wood nettle and some basswood. And we are gonna start off with a quick description of how you can get wood nettle. What you see are some photos of wood nettle. The photo on the left is of a nettle patch and also of some stalks that have been stripped. The photo on the right is of bundles of wood nettle strands, which is what we want to collect. Now, when you go to a nettle patch, you're going to quickly find out that nettles have these tiny hairs on their stalks and their leaves, and that's what gives them the stain. But there is a way to deal with that. Basically, this would be a nettle plant for demonstration. And you can either have a glove on your hand or something like a rag, and what you do is you grab the plant near the base and you strip up. And that will basically take away the leaves and most of the stinging hairs. So once you've done that, you can take the stalk and pull it out of the ground. And when it's fresh, it'll still have some liquid in it, so it'll make the stripping part easier. What you do is you crack the wood nettle, and when you do that, you'll be able to get your fingers on some of this outer skin here and it just peels off like that. And this is what we want. So we want to collect the outer skin peeling of the wood nettle. So to get enough for a mat, you may need about 30 plants or maybe seven, 70 plants, depending on how much cord you need for your mat or how big your mat is. Then what you can do is put it in bundles or kind of drape it over something so that it dries. Because once it's dry, it'll keep for a long time and you can make the cordage itself whenever you want. The last plant we are going to need is basswood. Basswood is a tree and it has leaves that look like the ones in the picture on the left. 
the leaves are spade shaped and usually a little bit larger than your hand. The part that we need from the basswood tree is the bark. And since pulling the bark off of a tree is not very good for the tree, it's really better if you get large branches and then pull the bark off of those. How you do that is by making shallow cuts into the branch just so that you can put your fingers underneath the bark and then pry it off. Usually this is easier to do in the spring because the sap is running through the tree and the bark basically slides right off of the basswood. Once you have the basswood bark, you need to let it soak or rot for a couple of weeks. This is a photo of some bark soaking in a water tank. Basswood bark is actually made up of several layers and there's the outer bark and the inner bark. The inner bark is what we want to make cordage with. Inner bark is usually very papery and fibrous, while outer bark is brittle and won't make cordage. So what the soaking actually does is help separate these layers. And once it's soaked or rotted enough, you'll be able to peel the inner bark right off of the outer bark. And you can get rid of the outer bark and just keep the inner bark and dry it out. Once you've soaked it long enough, you'll be able to pull off the inner bark, which looks like this. Then you can just let this dry and it will keep just like nettle so you can pull it out and use it and turn it into cordage whenever you want. The last material we need is a matting needle. Native Americans made matting needles out of a variety of materials such as wood, bone, or even metal in historic times. If bone was used, the needles were usually made out of the rib bones of deer or small animals. Today it would probably be easier to get the rib of a cow. Ribs were ideal because it was relatively easy to crack the bone into the shape of a needle. Ribs were also good because they have a natural curve which helps in the mat sewing process. Once the general shape was pounded out, it was very easy to simply grind the needle into shape using a rough stone. Then a hole could be drilled or ground into the matting needle. All right, we have our materials, but there's still a lot of work to be done. First of all, we have to make cordage. Now, cattail mats need a lot of cordage to stay together. So the process I'm going to show you can actually be used with basswood, nettle, or any other types, type of strands that you have. You basically start off with two main strands, and you knot them together at the top. Then, you're going to separate them so that you have a V. You lay this on your thigh. And what you kind of want to do is roll the strands forward so that they start spinning a little bit. And you notice you're keeping a hold on them with your left hand, grabbing onto the knot here. So once they start spinning a little bit, we can actually start twisting them together. And how we do that is by laying the V on our leg and then pushing them both forward. But even though I'm doing that, you can see they're still separate. But when I do that and then let go of my left hand, you can see that the strands automatically twist over themselves. So they're actually holding each other together. So we have this little section twisted. I'm going to move my left hand up and grab at this, the start of the V again. So then I'll start over. Push forward and let go. And after I let go, I can even kind of twist it with my left hand a little bit to make it stronger. So slide down, do it again. Sometimes you may have a little bit of trouble getting the strands to roll, so you can kind of work on them like this. Or maybe you need to get your hands wet. Not really wet, just a little bit damp so that they catch on the cord. Now you can see I'm kind of running out of cord here. So what I'm going to do is grab a new piece of basswood I'm going to lay the end 
underneath where I'm holding on with my left hand. So then I'm going to kind of separate this one out and just kind of roll these together a little bit so they kind of stick together. Once they start rolling, I can bring the other one over again so it makes a V and keep doing it. You can see the new strand is just replaced. Once in a while you may have to comb out the ends because they tend to twist together at the end too. So just by doing that splicing and adding new strands, I can do this and make the cord as long as I want. You can see I'm having a little bit of trouble rolling this one, so I'll just keep rubbing it until it starts to spin. Sometimes the bark will be a little bit stiff and you have to roll it more. Nettle is also kind of stiff sometimes, so you may have to rub it between your hands or scrape it a little bit, just so that it's more string-like. Now don't get discouraged if this doesn't look very good the first time or it doesn't hold together very well. It takes practice, and you'll get better, trust me. So there's our cord. Here you can see two bundles of cord that I've made. The bundle on the left is basswood, and the bundle on the right is nettle. Now that we have all of the materials we need, we can start the construction process. The method I learned came from this monograph written by Karen Peterson. In it, Mrs. Maggie Skinaway Wadina of the Chippewa or Ojibwe Nation described how to make a sewn cattail mat. All right, to start the construction process, we are going to soak the ends of the cattails. What I have here are the inner leaves and the outer leaves in separate bundles. For the inner leaves, we are going to soak the bottom. So I can just put these right in this bucket of hot water. The outer leaves, we are actually going to soak the tips. So I just have to flip my pile over. Then I can just set these aside for now. The other thing I did to prepare was to tie this, the nettle cord, to a nail up on the wall. If you don't have a nail, you can use a hook or a doorknob or something else so that this is suspended. And this is our nettle cordage. All right, so we have our nettle cord hanging here. And this is actually called the foundation twine. And what we're going to be doing is tying the cattails onto this cord. And we're going to be doing that using our basswood. So I'm going to take an end of my basswood bundle and basically just tie a knot onto the foundation twine. Then I'll have the basswood off to my right. Now you'll notice that I'm also keeping the nettle cord nice and tight. So I'm kind of sitting on it. Then what we are going to do is grab an inner leaf and an outer leaf. Now you notice that generally the outer leaves are a bit bigger than the inner leaves. And you'll also notice that cattail leaves are kind of cupped in shape. And what we're going to be doing is putting the inner leaf inside the cup of the outer leaf so that they kind of overlap like that. And we'll always be using a pairs, pairs of leaves like this. Then what I'm going to be doing is turning them so that the cups kind of face the wall. Then I'll hold them in my left hand and grab my basswood cord in my right. I'm going to wrap the cord around my hand so that it's kind of sitting in a loop like this. Then I'm going to put the cattail leaves right up against the nettle twine and fold the ends over. And when I fold them over, I'm going to make sure that the loop goes over the top of them so that when I pull the basswood cord tight, 
the leaves are stuck on the nettle twine. So we have our first pair put on. Then I'm going to grab another pair. So an outer leaf and an inner leaf. And I'll do the same thing. Put the inner leaf inside the outer leaf, just like that. But this time, I'm going to leave the cups facing me. So I'll hold them like this, wrap the cord over, and this time I'll put them behind the nettle twine, then fold the ends over, put the loop over the top, and pull tight. So now we have two pairs on. So what do you think I'll do with this one? Put the inner side the cup of the outer. Since this one was facing the wall, this cup was facing me, this cup is going to face the wall again. Wrap over the twine, fold, put the loop over, and pull tight. Then grab another pair. So those cups face the wall. These cups will stay facing me. Move over, tuck behind, fold over, and pull the basswood cord tight. And notice that keeping it wet makes sure these leaves stay flexible and they don't crack when you fold them over. And you can see I can keep making the mat longer and longer, as long as I have cattail leaves. This one faced me, so this one will face away. Wrap over, put on top, fold, pull tight. As you can see, I've added quite a bit to the mat here. Um, mats could sometimes be eight feet long and four feet tall, but I'm going to make this one quite a bit smaller than that. And all I really have to do is just cut the basswood and make a couple knots with the stinging metal. Now if mats were larger, some Native American cultures used to tie sticks to the end so that they would support the mat when it was placed on the side of a wigwam. I've made a couple knots there. I will just snip the sting metal. So I have the start of a mat. Here you can see the cattail mat. Um, you can tell that it's quite a bit smaller than what a real mat would have been. I ended up trimming off the edges just so this is a sample mat. Uh, if this were a real mat and put alongside of a wigwam, this would go on top and the bottom edge would be on the ground. Now if you remember, uh, when we soaked the leaves, we soaked them differently. The inner leaves had their bottom soaked and the outer leaves had their tips soaked. And since the outer leaves had their tips soaked, that meant that that end was tied up here. So the outer leaves had their bases down here. And having that thick base helped support the mat when it was up, a, up on the side of a wigwam. You'll also remember when we are tying the leaves on that we alternated, having sometimes the cups face down or sometimes they face up. And the last part of making a sewn cat on the mat is sewing it all together. And that alternating plays a part in the sewing process. When we start sewing, we are going to actually sew every other pair. This is a pair where the cup faces like this. So we are going to sew this one. We're going to skip the next one and then take the one after that. And this is another one where the cup faces this way. 
So when we sew, we're always going to sew together the pairs that are like this. And once we're done with this side, we are going to flip the mat over and do the same thing on the other side. We are going to sew a line right about here. Um, if this were a larger mat, sometimes lines would be sewn every 10 centimeters or every couple of inches. But we are just going to sew one line along here. And to start that off, I'm going to kind of sprinkle the mat with a bit of water. Okay, what else we're going to need is our matting needle. This is my matting needle. And also some basswood string. And here I have cut this piece of string to be about twice the length of the mat. So that means I'll sew this side and then sew the other side. So what I'm going to do is simply thread the needle a little extra out and then start on this end. Since sewing can be the trickiest part of making a mat, I'm going to try to show you the process up close. Now remember we are going to be sewing every other pair of leaves and they are the ones that are going to be like this. So here's a pair of leaves and what we are going to do is work with each one a little bit differently. The bottom leaf, or the inner leaf, is going to be pierced with the matting needle. So we're just going to go up and through. Then, the upper leaf, we are going to do something different. We are going to go up, but before we go through the top, we are going to change the needle a little bit and then push so that we actually go through the leaf, like that. See how we are underneath that side and also underneath this side. So once we've done that, then we can gently pull the needle through. So that's actually sewn both of these pairs together. Then we can move on to the next pair that is cupped. So we are going to sew every other pair just like this. Going up through the inner leaf and slightly poking into the upper leaf and then going through. All right, we're going to try to sew this mat. This is our first pair that we want to sew. And this is the inner leaf and outer leaf. So again, I'm going to poke up through the bottom leaf, or the inner leaf, and then poke up and into, and then go through the upper leaf. Gently pull the needle through. So I will skip the next one, and then sew the one after that. So again, up through the bottom one, poke into the top one, and then go through. Find in the next pair you want, which is cut down. Up through the bottom leaf. Through the top leaf. OK, 
try not to pull the cord too tight as you're working. You kind of want to leave them spaced a bit. So I'm going to continue this process until I get to the end. All right, now I'm done sewing every other pair on this side. So what I'm going to do is basically flip the mat over. You see that the pairs that I sewed are on the bottom. So again here, I'm going to start at the end and start sewing the pairs of leaves that look like this. Guess I may have to get it wet on this side too. it a little bit loose. See I'm gonna sew every other pair again because the other pair is actually already sewed on the other side. So when we get done this will actually be a four layer mat. Two layers in each pair and two layers to the whole mat. And this layering was great because when you put it on the side of a wigwam it would help keep the rain off, keep the snow off, and having the outer leaves face with their cups down actually helps shed the rain. So all of the leaves that are on the outside look like this. So it'll be a nice siding. So once again, I'll just continue sewing. Well, I'm done sewing this side too. So I think all that's left to do is tie the ends together. If this mat were full size, I may want to add sticks to the sides to strengthen it or maybe sew another row further down, but as it is, this mat is pretty small. The only other thing I would do was go up top here and kind of poke the ends through or bring others forward so that they match whatever side they're on. But otherwise, this mat is pretty much done. I wish you luck in any of the projects you do.